You guys, we got a chance to speak to the director of the Marvels, Nia DaCosta. This is an absolute honor. I'm a huge fan of your work, especially oh, you your so take much. on Candyman. Oh, it thank is you. just so great. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> tell me this, tell me this. I'm assuming that with both Little Woods and Candyman, you had a tremendous amount of autonomy as a writer-director. And I was just wondering what that transition for you was like, because this is like this giant sure, machine. Sure, sure. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, my first film was a completely independent film. I wrote it. Um, it was my original idea, directed it, had independent financing. So I had complete full autonomy on that film. And then I, you know, Candyman the studio film. So that shifts, obviously, when you're stepping into that, not just being a studio film, but also it's it's a big brand it's ip you know it's it's um jordan peele co- co-writing and producing right. so you know so you shift into that sort of you know space and then you go into this bigger arena so i kind of had like a step-by-step guide into you know moving from that you know complete autonomy of independent film into collaborating more closely with my executives with the studio to create something you know inside of their world so it was really like just a, a kind of a learning curve a process of figuring out how that collaboration would work that's very cool. Uh, so we haven't seen the whole movie yet. They've showed us about 20 minutes of yeah, it, yeah. right? Um, I-, I read that you grew up a fan of Sailor Moon. And yeah. I was wondering, for the 20 minutes I've seen, it seemed like there were some anime sensibilities. Am I way <laughs> off? You know, I wouldn't put it past my brain to just somehow bring that into everything that I do. Um, you know, I also, the I think you guys saw the animation in it as well in those first 20 minutes, right? Yeah, that yeah. was a really fun collaboration between what um, Megan McDonald, our, our first writer wrote, and uh, a really amazing storyboard artist and I put together. It was really just, um, um, I mean, that, that feels to me like very anime energy. So I think maybe a little bit's in there, yeah. Oh, very cool. Um, uh, tell me this, Br- you were bringing together three different elements from three different sources, right? You had the first Ms. Mar- Captain Marvel movie, you've got Ms. Marvel, the TV series, you've got a character out of WandaVision. They feel like different things with a unifying thread of being a part of the Marvel universe. I was just wondering what that complexity was like, stringing that together. Mm. Um, For me, it was less about the visual or the style that we had to make sure it made sense and came together. It was more the honoring their stories and and making sure we had enough of each of their stories in this movie and balancing them well. You know, with Carol, I was really obsessed with just figuring out who she was when she wasn't saving the universe. Because in the first film, she doesn't know who she is. So there's so much that we still need to learn about her. With Monica, she gets her powers at the end of WandaVision, uses them a little bit, but we don't see her sort of yeah. become a hero. And so that, that that was really important to have in this film. And then Kamala, we get so much of her background. We understand her family, where she's from, how she thinks. But this gave us an opportunity to put her in an even crazier, more dramatic, more cosmic situation, which is always fun to do with a street-level hero. So I think balancing all those threads was um, was key for us. Yeah, I mean, even from the brief bits that we saw, my biggest takeaway was the chemistry felt almost instantaneous. Yeah. Like, I loved their banter. When they were in a room together, I felt it. And I thought yeah. that was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, they're great. I've got like a minute and a half yet. Would you mind if I asked you like a super geeky question? Please, I love this. <laughs> well, I was curious, and I'm not sure if you're allowed to talk about it, but I was curious if there were characters or elements that you really wanted to bring in in like early draft that you couldn't or that you decided against mm. and what you can tell me and talk about. Yeah, I think I can, I've said this before, I think, and I, I'm pretty sure I can say it. Um, One of the f- earliest pitches I had, one of the craziest early pitches I had when we were still figuring out what the finale would look like um, was bringing in Adam Warlock um, and having like time travel <laughs> involved in it. Um, but Adam was going to be in Guardians 3, so that was a non-starter right. from the beginning. But that I really like Adam War- Warlock as a character, so that I thought that could have been really cool. Oh, that would be very, very cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm all out of time now. But uh, I'm looking forward to seeing the whole movie. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm so happy for you. And I, I can't wait. Thank so, you so much. Lovely to thank meet you. you. Oh my God! I can't. Can you? I got it. That was Nia DaCosta. She is the director of the Marvels. It's now showing in Malaysian cinemas. Let us know what you think once you've seen it. Sound off in the comments. Thank you so much for watching.